Ireland versus Russia, Russia versus Ireland. And the gong for the first round, the gong most appropriate in China. And Taylor, as you know, in red, and the Southpaw Russian in blue. It was cagey enough in the European final, if I do remember, in Rotterdam last year. They know everything about each other, that it boxed each other, as, you, as we've said, twice. But they've seen tapes that have watched little things. Where's the weaknesses? Where are the strengths? Can we attack this? Can we attack that? Taylor quicker on her feet by the looks of things. And she really looks in the peak of condition, Katie Taylor, right up on the balls of her feet there, ready to move either way, trying to change the angles, more static Russian. It has hardly a punch been thrown yet. Sizing up each other. First one comes out from the Russian. May have connected. As I said yesterday, we're not privy to the scores. Have to wait until the end of the round and do our own count. But then in the days gone by when we used to do these commentaries from the stadium, we used to have to count ourselves and depend on our mental arithmetic <laughs> to get us there. So there's not going to be much between these two as the Messias Dunn, hey. Walsh and Dowling have said already. There won't be much in it, and I wouldn't expect to be much in it, and I hope there isn't much in it, because it's all the more important if you're going to win a close one, I think. But Taylor is doing all the moving, moving around anti-clockwise, and making Ochigeva try and make up. See, Taylor in quickly with the right hand, and then quick move away. <laughs> Ochieva, nice little combination there. <laughs> Certainly Taylor not getting her own way. The gong goes for the end of round one. There wouldn't be much between them. Perhaps a, nothing between them. 2-2 two, two at the end of the first round, and that is just about right. 2-2, two, two, very close, very cagey, and Billy Walsh as these comments. Yeah, look, it was, it was very, going to be very tight. I was surprised that Sofia actually came out and uh, attacked and was more aggressive. But that, that is Katie's game plan to sit back. Her right hook is very dangerous. You know, I think it's a fair reflection on the fight. Uh, she was level. I can see Katie stepping up. You've just got to be careful after she attacks that she gets out and doesn't get caught with that, that looping right hook from uh, uh, together. Thank you, Billy. Yes, her, her lead right hand, and then she turns that into a hook, the jab into a hook. And that, as Billy said, is clearly dangerous, but she's not as quick as Taylor. But this is a close one. This is what we all expected, a very, very close one. And this could be a one-punch fight. Orthodox Taylor, left hand lead, left foot out, and the opposite. So you look at it, a mirror image of yourself when you box a southpaw. Both cages, you can see. So if you make the effort to throw the punch at Taylor with a nice head movement, just got out of the way of that attack. It's the read, read the movements, the little shiver in the body when you think a shot is going to be thrown. Off the back foot there, right hand from Taylor. Off the trail hand. Oh, that's good stuff. Beautiful stuff there from Taylor. Combination, classy. Always beautifully set up, Taylor. But then, of course, most boxers at this level are. Total, absolute concentration on the face there of Katie Taylor. Right hand poise, but she has all the punches, Taylor. The jab, the left hook, the right hook, the right cross. And she can get in close and mix it if necessary, but I wouldn't advise that in this particular contest. Another solid right hand coming in. Very, very close. And you'd have to see it too cagey. Very technical, very cagey. They just know too much about each other, really, in a way. But Taylor has the range, and she has the range, I would, have, I would suggest, better than has the Russian. Just has to keep her head up a little bit. By no means ever uh, an under-the-counter puncher. Katie Taylor caught her the right hand coming in there. 
and that's that right cross to which Billy Walsh referred to in the inter-round there. It's a dangerous punch, and it is the most dangerous pu punch of this contest. The right hand from Okieva. Gong again. That's the second gong, end of the second round. And we're going to hear from one of our lads again, and we'll go to McDowling. Yeah, Jimmy, well, level, level here now at the moment, but I think Katie needs to cut down the distance between herself and her opponent. She needs to just put a little more pressure on. She needs to put the Russian on the, on the back foot. She needs to be getting in a little bit quicker, banging in that right hand and following up with her left hook. But in, while doing that, she's got to keep her own left hand high because Oshigeva is bringing in her own right hook and sometimes catching Katie. But we did say at the outset that it was going to be a very, very technical fight, and that's obviously the way it is. McDowling, thank you. Technical, close, close, technical. And Pete Taylor doing his animated show in the ring with his daughter, coach and father. Very, very close to each other. And now we're into the halfway mark. The defending champion against a twice previous champion. As I said, between them, five world titles. It's a massive haul. So you're looking at the two best in the world here at, at 60K, lightweight division. The two best, with no argument. And it's probable that they could meet in the Olympic final. Because coming into the Olympics as gold and silver, whichever wins which here, I would guess that they'll be seated one top and one bottom of the draw for the Olympics. However, that's another story for another day. Taylor getting an opponent in the corner now, flashing out a nice right hand. There's a lovely jab coming in there from Taylor. Again off her trailing hand. Just keep her left hand up just a little bit and watch that right hand coming in. There it was again, that hooking right hand. Didn't connect. It is the signature punch of uh, Okjayeva. <laughs> nice little jab. No much power in it there from Taylor, but got into the face of the Russian. Taylor in control, early stages of this round. Her jab is good now, Taylor. And she's winning this round thus far. It's 4 4, remember. First two rounds were level. Taylor looks quicker. She looks to have a bit more in the tank, a bit the same age. There's no wear and tear of years here. I think it was Billy Walsh who said that one of them certainly didn't. Maybe all of them said back in studio. But one thing about Katie Taylor, whoever she's boxing, she boxes the same way at the best she can produce. It's a great sign, a great sign in any sports person. Always giving of your best. And there is Taylor, 4-2 ahead in that round, and two points ahead overall. Looking good, Bernard Dunn. Yeah, we're, we're bringing a bit of a sigh of relief here now. It's um, a bit more success for Katie there. I think Katie needs to faint a little bit more, Jimmy, with her right shoulder and draw that right hook out of what she gave her so she can counter with her own left hook. She needs to get a little bit more closer to her and stand basically on her toe and making her opponent think all the time. But, um, you know, we're, we're three points up at this stage. I cannot see her opponent catch her now. She's a counter puncher. Katie will move and box. That's Bernard Dunn, back in studio. So you've heard from all our three uh, studio guests who between them have 18 Irish national senior titles. So you could say they know what they're talking about. So how can Ochigeva of Russia pull back those two points, that two points deficit against Katie Taylor? Or is the girl from Bray about to get squatter's rights on the lightweight championship of the world? She's quick, Taylor, quick of brain, quick of body. And as uh, Bernard Dunn suggested, well, well, that she faints with her right shoulder just to draw that right, stinging right hook, which wasn't so evident a hook in the third round. And as this fourth round starts to evolve, there's still not all that much from Ochieva. And Taylor looks in control, not in the sense of throwing punches or scoring punches, 
and the referee would like them to box now and enough of the shadow Taylor comes after a little spurt and as they come out of the spurt a little left hand from Taylor two points ahead she's got to protect that but if the opportunity presents itself go in that was a good right hook there that last little onslaught from Ochieva Two points is the lead, or was the lead, going into this last round, and there's 49 seconds to go. Is Taylor to win yet another world title? There's certainly nothing untoward happening in this round that would suggest anything different. The Taylor up on her toes now. Really very athletic, always in great form. Those are the feet that won her over 40 international caps for Ireland. She could have been a footballer, of course, as well as a boxer of great repute. Less than 20 seconds now left in it. Just able to get around. No, she's ahead, I should think, Taylor. She's counting in her head. The abacus in her head is working. And I reckon she knows now that she's just there by a couple of points. Or is she? She can't really afford to take chances. Head up, break up, restart, and listen for the gong. It's going to go any second. There it is. And uh, whilst we don't know, I should imagine Taylor will be the champion of the world yet again. But not much in it. She took that two-point advantage she had after round three, took it into the fourth box quite cleverly, defensively when she had to. And she always looks unruffled, doesn't she? Whether she wins or loses here, isn't she a credit to the Bray Boxing Club, to her family, to Ireland and to boxing? And to Billy Walsh there and the, uh, the whole high performance squad. And here comes the result. So who's it to be? On the right hand of the referee is the Irish girl. She is the world champion again. It's unbelievable almost. There's more there, the manager of the Irish team. Katie Taylor, magnificent, 11-7. What a champion, what a star, what a sportswoman. And so the incredible world gold journey of Katie Taylor continues unabated. Champion of the world in India, China, Barbados, and now back in India, or back in China. Pound for pound, kilo for kilo, with little cause for argument. Katie Taylor is the greatest female boxer on earth. As the Tina Turner song says, simply the best. <laughs>